20 years I've had Crohn's disease, 16 years of medication, I've had a bowel perforation, ileostomy bag and a reversal. Now I'm in complete remission for the last five years. I have no symptoms, no flare-ups, I'm on no medication. And today I'm gonna to explore the holy grail question for all of us IBD warriors. Can we actually cure Crohn's disease with diet? I'm 31 years old, I'm five foot three. I've had Crohn's disease since I was 11 years old. And the reason why we discovered I had Crohn's disease is because I was a lot smaller than the other kids. My mum was worried that I was so tiny and what was the problem? And the byproduct for me being so small was the fact that I got Crohn's disease at such a young age where I was unable to absorb nutrients and minerals from my food. So the question posed by my mum was, what should we feed him? What should he eat? It turns out that I had lots of energy. I was very active. I used to play football, cricket, badminton every week, all the way through high school, through my childhood. But I had so much energy for someone who had Crohn's disease, so it didn't really make much sense. And we was like, well, is it his diet? Is his diet still maintaining his energy levels? But the truth is my diet was extremely shit. I was eating pizzas and doner kebabs and McDonald's and all sorts of nonsense. And that was, that was normal, that's how I grew up and that was my normal at the time. I didn't think it was anything wrong with my diet. But the truth is, all of those foods played a factor in the years to come. In fact, when I was 13, I went to see this IBD specialist and my dad took me and my dad asked the same question my mum did probably two years earlier and said, well, what can we do to fatten him up? And the doctor replied, and this is his expert advice as an IBD specialist, feed him bacon and biscuits. At the time, I didn't think nothing of it. My dad was like, great, right, I can give him bacon butties and we can keep having, we can have full Englishes and we can fatten him up that way and feed him a load of digestive biscuits. But now, I'm more educated, I'm a 31 year old man, I'm not 13 anymore. And I'm, by the World Health Organization, bacon and processed meats is carcinogenic, which causes cancer. So the expert advice from an IBD specialist was to tell me to have bacon and biscuits. And I wonder why I had Crohn's disease for the last 20 years and suffered tremendously for 20 years. And I really want to explore diet because in the community, in the IBD community, there's a lot of people who think, well, diet doesn't have an impact. And it's not a one size fits all. What works for me doesn't necessarily work for someone else. I appreciate that and I understand that. But at the same time, it's what you consume is affecting your gut in some capacity, which I will explore. But for now, let's just go back to the fundamental fundamentals of what's going on in my life. So let's go back to the fact that my parents tried fattening me up. But like, what can we eat? Because I was very skinny and I was frail, but I was very active and I was very energetic as a child. And I was on azathioprine for 15 to 16 years. I was on mesalazine, and you're probably thinking, mesalazine for a Crohn's patient. Well, Donnie discovered after me taking it for at least eight years that it does nothing for Crohn's disease. So for eight years, I was a guinea pig for everybody out there with colitis because I was being pumped with mesalazine, thinking it would help my Crohn's, and it did nothing. And they later discovered, after all them years of giving it to people like me, that it only helps ulcerative colitis and nothing to do with Crohn's disease. So that had a, a major impact on my confidence in the medical system at the time. When it came to like 2015 now, I got diagnosed in 2001. By the time 2015 rolled around, I, I came off all the medication, I had enough of I was sick of being sick. This medication wasn't doing anything. The dosage kept in increasing. I was on, put on Prodisolone, they tried, there was talks about Infliximab and Humira, and it was like, oh, this doesn't work, let's just try this. Oh, well, if that doesn't work, just up the dose. And after 50, 14, 15 years of medication, I got sick of it and I just completely stopped everything. And to my own surprise, I felt so much better. My bowel movements, which were roughly 10 to 12 times a day, which was normal because I was so used to it from a young age, came right down to five, six times a day, which was, I was like, quite happy with that. Um, the pains in my stomach really reduced. I wasn't flaring up as often. And I was like, well, if I come off the medication, why have I got better? And it turns out azathioprine, the side effects of azathioprine 
is the exact same as my symptoms I was getting with Crohn's disease and that was diarrhea, stomach pain, weight loss, loss of appetite. They were the prevalent symptoms that I personally faced and the side effects were the same. So I've been pumped with drugs for 14 to 15 years at this point, which was keeping me completely in flare ups. So why did I was just I'm mind blown at the fact that I was on medication for so long and the fact that is it did nothing for my health. In fact it made my health far worse and it deteriorated rapidly in them years. So I was off medication now for a good year and a half and it got to Christmas Day in 2016 and on Christmas Day my bowel perforated, my intestine just split, waste leaked into my insides, a major organ just burst on me. And let's fast forward because I've done a full documentary on my story, on my journey from my bowel perforation to where I am today. And I'll leave a link in the description in the top corner. But the fact is, I left with an ileostomy bag. I was nine stone to begin with. I dropped from nine stone all the way down to five stone two, which is around 80 pounds which you can imagine is the weight of a small child and I was just a skinny, frail, I want to say man, but I was far from a man at this point and I'll add a picture up here for reference. And then all I cared about was getting better and, and changes reversible. How do I improve my health? How do I learn from my mistakes and the misguidance I've received all my life? And I learned about nutrition. Well, does diet really impact? health because at the time I was drinking uh, cans of coke twice a day, religiously drinking cans of coke, fizzy drinks was like the staple in my diet, S sweets like sugary snacks, I loved them, I, every day was like, I'd probably eat more snacks than I would meals, like meals was a big thing and I was always scared to eat, that was a thing because if I ate too much I'd flare up, so I was always eating small portions, I could never finish food and it was just, I really had a bad relationship with food for a at least two thirds of my life. I came out of the, the bowel perfume, had the ileostomy bag, eventually got the ileostomy bag reversed and that's when my life changed for the better. And I learned so much more about diet. And when people say diet doesn't play a major factor, I'd agree to some extent because diet is just part of the puzzle. There's a big picture when it comes to all this and that is diet, you see lifestyle habits, and when I say lifestyle habits, I'm talking about things like smoking and drinking and even your habits in the morning when you first wake up, what, what's the first thing you do? Do you pick up your phone and then read Instagram or read the news and think, oh, there's something negative here. Immediately you put yourself on the back foot first thing in the morning. So it sets the tone for your day. That's a bad lifestyle habit in my opinion. Then you've got stress management. Stress is prevalent in, in our society now. We live a, such a busy, fast-paced life. We get stressed over the smallest thing. And the thing is, stress is more difficult to manage, but the thing is, it's a major factor in what causes a flare-up. And even what can even trigger uh, an autoimmune disease from even being created. It's a mixture of um, stress and poor diet over a, an extended period of time. Because it's all about consistency, and consistency works in both ways. If you have really good habits, you're getting great results because you're consistent. But if you have really bad habits, you have really bad results. And what I'm getting at is, I was eating doner kebabs and pizzas and burgers and bullshit for 10, 15 years, cans of coke. That was consistent with my bad habits, which then ultimately led to a bowel perforation. So like, well, let me just flip that on its head and change my diet. Diet is fundamental because it's not about what you eat, it's about what you eliminate. And what you eliminate is far more important for me. And before I go into this, you're going to be thinking, well, you know, what, what does this guy eat now? Like, how has he managed to put so much size on and weight and how has he got so strong? I know the baggy jumper is not the most flattering thing in the world for my shape, but you can look at the thumbnail. I cut out... From day one, I was a meat eater, so but I wasn't really big on red meat anyway, so I cut out red meat, pork, fish, 
So I'm left with chicken um, in the early days of diet when I was recovering and I've come to what I currently eat now. But I cut out raw vegetables, nuts and seeds. So seeds, you don't want to consume seeds if you've got Crohn's disease or any form of IBD because seeds are very hard to digest. So imagine you have say a watermelon and it's got the clump of seeds and they're all together and it, seeds go down to your esophagus, it goes into your stomach, the stomach throws gastric juices at it, at it, stomach acid doesn't break it down, doesn't turn into what is called chyme and chyme is like a slush when the food gets broken down it's like a like a paste and then it goes into your intestine so these seeds stay intact. Imagine where you have active disease and it reaches that area it's going to agitate it can cause a flare. If you've got ulcerative colitis, for example, it can catch an ulcer, it can cause bleeding when you go to the toilet. So seeds is something you stay away with, stay away from. Um, but if you have them blended or grinded, that's a different story, that's completely fine. Uh, things like obviously sugar, sugar causes massive inflammation, it's pro-inflammatory. Sugar's in almost everything. It's even baby food, you know. Processed sugar should not be confused with natural sugar, and natural sugar is occurring in fruits, for example, bananas, oranges, strawberries, blueberries, and so on. The body digests them in a completely different manner to processed sugar. So sugar was cut out. Caffeine. I haven't had caffeine to this day still. I don't have any pre-workout, I don't have any tea, I don't have any coffee. Dairy, so cow's milk was the first thing that I had to go for sure. Spicy food, processed food, and uh, processed food, I spoke earlier about bacon being carcinogenic, it's a processed meat, causes cancer, that was cut out. Fried food, and the fact is, I was like, well, what am I gonna eat now? Like, I'm very limited, because that, all, everything I basically cut out was the staple in my previous diet. But once I started eliminating those foods, and I knew what my trigger foods are, like onions for me personally is a trigger. To you, you think, well, onions don't actually cause me a problem, which is fine. Another thing is gluten. Gluten is a gut destroyer. I can get away with gluten. I do have it in my diet now and again. But generally speaking, like, if you want to go into remission, gluten needs to stop. And the fact is, don't swap it for gluten-free stuff, because it's the lesser of two evils. If you've got gluten-free, bread for example then to mimic that gluten taste you have to pack it with more chemicals more thickeners more emulsifiers and e numbers just to get that same taste and it's like well what's the battle do i have gluten or should i just have the bag of chemicals uh, so if you're gonna avoid gluten avoid it completely don't try and find these alternatives that goes with anything alternatives are equally as bad in some measure so, I'm not going to sit here and preach, oh, you should have a vegetarian or plant-based diet. You need to understand that a lot of the foods that are normal in society actually cause a, a lot of problems, especially of long-term consumption. Like, fizzy drinks, I think that's obviously packed with full of sugar and shit anyway. But it's the foods that we think, oh, that's okay. Red meat. Red meat is really hard for the body to digest. Imagine a steak and you're chewing it and you're like, nom, nom, and then it, and you're still chewing it and chewing it, pork as well, chewing it. And you might just have enough and give up and just, oh, swallow it now. But it's still a big piece of meat that's there. The stomach struggles to break it down and it's throwing the gastric juices at it and it's like, well, I can't break it down, I've done the best I can do. And now it goes into the intestines. But it's still a chunk of meat intact. And while it's making through, and it, again, it reaches that area where you've got active disease, it's going to cause a blockage. If you've got a stricture, it's going to cause a flare-up or even discomfort and bloating. So why why would you put yourself through it? For taste, your taste buds change once you start changing the way you perceive food. And the thing is, how in this day and age we pursue, perceive food with, oh, it needs to taste nice needs to look appealing and edible but if someone like for me at, at the beginning it was very difficult to eat um, spinach and at the start I had cooked spinach but not raw spinach now I have 
both because five years gone by I started introducing um, some fruits back into my diet and vegetables so I was like oh this is hard this I'll, I'd rather have a burger but the thing is my viewpoint on the food was like well the burger is what caused my bowel preference that's what's caused me to be ill for almost 20 years of my life why would I ever want to go back to them days? I don't want to go back to hospital. I don't want to have a flare up. I'm in remission and I've been medication free for five years and I want to stay that way. So I don't want to regress. So when I look at, say, spinach, I don't think, oh, well, this doesn't taste not as nice as a burger, even though it's not a fair comparison. But I don't think, oh, well, the spinach is not going to taste that nice. I'm, I'm looking at spinach, well, what, what can I get out of this spinach? All right, I'm going to get vitamin K, I'm going to get magnesium. I'm gonna get copper and but it's easy for us to say well you're deficient in certain minerals it's like but what do the minerals do and minerals play a huge part in our physiology and our day-to-day -day life because our bodies are comprised of 102 minerals where are we getting 102 minerals from every day I still want to know that question because I'm not gonna get it from Donna kebabs that's not giving me any mineral content really I'm gonna get it from um, fried chicken or pizzas. It comes from food that's grown out of the earth. Mother Nature has provided us with those minerals. CMOS, CMOS, if you haven't heard about it, super potent and quite nice actually. All you need is a CMOS is found in different parts of the world. Generally, it's, you get Irish CMOS, but over in the Caribbean, it prevalent St. Lucia, for example, lots of sea moss, and it's, it's, it comes from the sea, it's like a seaweedy type substance, I don't know the best way to describe it, but you, you blend it in, and you turn it into a paste or a gel, and you consume it in that manner, you can put it into smoothies, or you can just have it as a teaspoon. But the thing is, with sea moss, it has 92 of the 102 minerals that the body needs. So if you have two teaspoons of that a day, you only get 92 minerals out of your 102. Now you just need to find the rest, and that can come from other parts of your diet. So when people say to me, oh, that diet doesn't do anything for me, I tried to change my diet and things like that. But I want to know, what did you change your diet to? What did you start consuming? Because there's so many different diets now when it comes to IBD. You get the beige diet, and people try paleo and keto. Um, and go completely vegan or just cut out meat. There's so many different things that you can do, but there's no one shoe, one size that fits all, basically. But the elimination of foods is pretty much standard between us all, and that is you want to cut out all the bullshit. And I'll leave the list in the description below as well so for reference. But for me, I have herbs. And when I say herbs, herbs are plants that are grown out of the ground. It's been used in traditional Chinese medicine for thousands of years, been used in Ayurvedic medicine for thousands of years. It stems from ancient Egyptians and Romans and Greeks and Arabs. And it's worked wonders in my life. And it's worked wonders for all the people that I work with as a health gut coach as well. And these herbs also have high mineral content that have very powerful healing properties far greater than the conventional medication that I've certainly been on with no side effects as well and without them herbs then I'd be quite worried of what would happen with my health because that is my medication that is medication to the people that I work with as a health coach that they consume now and they've managed to heal their IBD, in, so that could be Crohn's disease, that could be ulcerative colitis, ulcerative proctitis, uh, IBS, celiac, divertilitis. There's so many different ones. I've, people have these ailments I've worked with and had proven results. And I've done all the hard work in my life to go through being this guinea pig all these years to actually like, why well, I've turned my life around. I'm always energetic, I'm full of life, I'm powerful in the gym, I'm one of the strongest people in the country, pound for pound, really. So, I've broken two deadlift records in the Yorkshire North East in the UK. I've become the Yorkshire powerlifting champion, I've become fourth in Britain for powerlifting. That was all after my bowel perforation and my ileostomy bag. 
and that was all within a year to two years after that surgery and a lot of that comes down to what I was consuming, how I was fueling my body, how I was living my life, how I was exercising, my lifestyle habit, my stress management, which is key. I'm always focused on like what, how can I stay calm and remain calm at all times. And it's easier said than done because we all like, well, we, oh, I want to think positive, I want to chill out. But the fact is, well, you, you know what works best for you. And for me, I've proven it with myself that the fact is, I feel great, I look incredible, I feel incredible, I want everybody else to feel the same that I do. It breaks my heart to see and hear people that are suffering or people reach out to me and ask me questions and say, well, what can I do to change my life? What do you eat? What, what do I need to cut out? And when people say, what do I need to cut out? I'm like, oh, good question, right question to ask. Because if I said to you, all right, here's what I eat, and I now go replicate my healing, you're not gonna do it just based off my diet alone. Diet is one piece of the puzzle. For example, 90% of your stress hormone, your cortisol, is manifested in your gut, developed in your gut. So if you're stressed, if you don't get a headache and think, oh, I'm stressed. And, I, I, I can't handle this, if what's going on? It's, well, if you've got IBD, you've got Crohn's, that first place you're gonna feel the effects of that stress is in your gut. We don't want that at all. If you're in a situation which you can't change or control it, why even stress? For example, you're in your car and you're late to work and there's someone at the traffic lights and you think, well, get out of my way because it's a green light and why have you stopped? Like, you're making me late for work. And you might be effing and blinding and getting stressed and wound up and... But that person in front doesn't know that you, you're pissed off at that person. They're not gonna suddenly hear you and move out the way or set off. You can't change that situation. You can't control that situation. So there's no need to rile yourself up, put yourself under tremendous pressure and stress and affect your health negatively for something that you can't really control. All you do is you look at the positive side of things. And me in that situation is how I, I'm a big believer in the universe. I'm a Sikh, I'm a big believer in Sikhism. And to me, well, if I got delayed on my journey and I'm late, well, I think, well, the universe is protecting me from what's gonna happen down the road. If I was that two minutes earlier, I might have uh, been caught up in a car accident or the, there could have been some instant, shall we say, up ahead and that delay. Oh, another one is when I get to my place, the car park's full and it's like, oh, right, well, the car park's usually full, but that two minute delay actually helped me because someone just pulled out as I pulled in, in this full car park, and I, now I've got that slot. Whereas if I got there two minutes earlier, I would even circle in and circle in and lost a spot. And that's just how I think because you've got to change your mindset when it comes to IBD and think positively and even if that didn't happen in that scenario you don't think well I tried to be positive and well I'll give it a shot and now I just leave the robot do it again but that's not the, the point you've got to stay on that path of thinking positively because you attract more positivity when I was ill and I was dying and I was a skinny skeleton I was lost all my independence, I couldn't wash myself, I couldn't clean, I couldn't dress myself, I couldn't cook, I couldn't do nothing. I didn't once think, oh well, my time's up, I've had a good run. It was like, I'm staying positive, I was manifesting, I was saying, I'm gonna come back stronger, I'm gonna come back faster, I'm gonna come back harder. And I proved that, and I proved that every day, and I have done for the last five years post surgery. So for everyone who's wondering, can diet, heal Crohn's disease? Absolutely yes, but you need to have your lifestyle habits in check. You need to have great mindset management and stress management. You have to exercise, you need to get outdoors. And I go into full detail of how to do all of this through my gut health coaching. Again, I work for people all around the world and it's very heartwarming for me to do because I know how you all feel. I've been there, I've done that, I lived it. I've had Crohn's disease probably in the top tier of people who've had it 
in the world at the worst level, to be fair. Granted, people do have it far worse than me, and I've got every bit of love and respect to all the IBD warriors out there. And I want to help every single person because I don't want you to suffer nowhere near the same way as I suffered in life. And now I live a great, happy life and a genuine life as well. I'm now on the side of life where I'm like, right, I'm healed, I'm happy, I'm confident. Now I want to, I want other people to feel what I feel. So for, for more information on the health coaching side of things, if you are interested, then you can click the link in the description. We can book a free consultation. We can come to a strategy and a game plan and see where you stand. Or you might even get some value out of a conversation and then you'll be confident enough to do your own thing. I'm happy with that. As a coach, I'm not here to think, well, how can I string out this process? I want you to heal as fast as possible. And I've done all the hard work in the background. I've spent thousands upon the thousands of hours of research for me to just say, well, here's all the information. Now you just need to follow it. And my programs are three months long. And after three months, I expect visible and fantastic results. And I have done so far. I've got proven results. You can see that on my Instagram from testimonials, for example. You can see my documentary of how I've actually turned my life around. You can see from my Instagram before and after pictures and the dates. And the dates are very short in time because I am very focused on healing. Like health is the top of my list. Without your health, you can't do anything in life. You can't go for the job you want. You can't get a promotion. You can't play the sports you want if your health is not the best and you suffer from ill health. It has to be at the very top of your priority list at all times, every single day, without fail. It certainly is for me. Oh, and I want that to be a priority for you all. I've got more videos on this YouTube channel which are beneficial for more generalised parts of your health as well as IBD as well, which I'm sure you'll find extremely useful. So please check them out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, All My Friends Are Eggs. And don't forget to like and comment on this video and tell me what your thoughts are on, on diet. Do you think it really does help IBD and Crohn's? Or do you, what have you eliminated? What have you added to diet. I'm, I'm excited to know. I'm intrigued to know. So please let me know. And I'm Manny from All My Friends Are Eggs. Safe.